Britain's largest semiconductor producer. This factory in Wales produces some 32,000 silicon wafers every month. What is the Newport wafer fab? What do they make here? Well, it's not the super sophisticated, minuscule logic chips of South Korea or Taiwan. They make something here called power semiconductors. These help devices manage power efficiently. You'll find them in things like kettles, TVs and mobile phone chargers. A big buyer is the car industry, which uses them for electric brakes and windows. But this site is now at the heart of a legal battle which could help define the UK's post-Brexit economic future. Last November, the government ordered the unwinding of the takeover of Newport Wafer Fab by a Dutch company called Nexperia. Why? Because Nexperia is itself owned by a Chinese company called Wingtech and the decision was made on national security grounds using the provisions of the new National Security and Investment Act. Nexperia has brought a judicial review against the government's order, which is ongoing. So what will happen to this company? A sale is a possibility, but the Newport Fab was loss-making before the Nexperia purchase in 2021. There are fears it could have to close down as a result of the government's decision at a cost of 600 well-paying local jobs. There are also fears skilled workers could leave the company because of the uncertainty that's been created. We were enjoying the, the benefits of a, of a new and forward-thinking owner. Um, next period, I've brought um, lots of benefits. They've brought bonuses, they've brought pay rises, they've, they've brought investment into both the building and the, and the fabrication facility. It's a little bit like being given a Christmas present and uh, suddenly it's been taken away again and, and it's being kept in a box out the back and nobody really knows where we're going to be getting it back again. The local MP thinks the way the government has handled this risks delivering a regional levelling down. We take it very personally that, you know, why is the government uh, seeming to penalise us? Yeah, levelling down is, is a, a phrase we could, we could use very well to describe what's actually happening here in Newport at the moment. If we don't have clear certainty um, in the next few months, these people are going to go to other jobs. We will lose this site. There's a much bigger picture here. This Newport factory sits at the centre of a Welsh cluster of what's called compound semiconductor expertise, with other local companies like IQE and SPTS Technologies. You could, at a bit of a stretch, call it Wales's Silicon Valleys. So what are these compound semiconductors? They're making them at Cardiff University on an experimental basis. They're chips made from compounds such as silicon and carbon rather than pure silicon. The combination of different materials gives them very useful properties. They can generate and detect light. They can facilitate high-speed communication. Experts say they're likely to be a central plank of massive future global markets from self-driving cars to advanced medical sensors to 6G wireless to super-fast quantum computers and that the UK is a genuine world leader in this frontier technology. Pretty much all of the uh, photovoltaics that are sent into space are compound semiconductor photovoltaics, and that's because of the size, weight and power advantages. There are some really crazy things going on there, some really interesting things. So at the moment, people are doing a lot of research in how to transmit power back from space to the Earth safely. And once those issues are solved, you can imagine compound semiconductor, large-scale photovoltaics in space, power stations in space. Really very exciting. Now, the Newport Wafer Fab doesn't at the moment actually produce these cutting-edge compound semiconductors that they're experimenting on in Cardiff. But the government seems to think the next period of takeover could mean valuable technological know-how in this area being extracted from the wider Welsh cluster and sent to China or that attempts to develop it here could be stymied because of the Chinese presence at Newport. Compound semiconductor technologies could have security and defence applications, and some insist there are valid national security reasons to block the Newport takeover. Well, they'll be taking a very evidence-based approach, so they'll be bringing lots of information they have to hand to, to weigh up the risk. It's, it's, it's basically a risk management decision of weighing up the, the downsides versus the upsides about taking these calls. So for them to have made a decision based on this approach, that would suggest there is some evidence, some information they're looking at that I think ultimately worries them just a bit too much. 
But Nexperia says it's ruled out any future compound semiconductor development at the Newport site and has pledged to block the export of technology overseas. And some fear the government's divestment order will end up damaging, not safeguarding, this important domestic technology cluster. There's certainly a strong feeling from the industry's leaders that the absence of a national semiconductor strategy from the government is deterring vital foreign investment. We've lost some opportunities for semiconductor companies, including compound semiconductor companies, to locate in the UK and in particular into Wales, um, going instead to Germany, where there are much bigger incentives. Um, and the same with the US. Uh, there are financial incentives, sometimes tax breaks, um, tax credits for research and development and so on and we're competing on a global stage. There's a lot of fear and confusion here and it's pretty hard actually to escape the conclusion that the UK government finds itself trapped by some global forces. On the one hand, there's pressure to side with the US in its new technological cold war against China. On the other hand, it badly needs investment into post-Brexit Britain. There's also a lack of clarity over economic strategy. Does the government go with international market forces on the direction of tech, or does it go with the international trend for more public subsidy and intervention? There is no digital without those chips. The European Union today pressed ahead with its own answer to America's multi-billion dollar chips act, subsidizing local silicon chip production. The Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, has said he wants to turn Britain into the world's next point, Silicon uh, Valley. But a UK national semiconductor strategy was first promised by ministers two years ago. Plans to publish were postponed again this week. Those who live and work in Wales's nascent Silicon Valleys insist they cannot wait any longer.